Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with what I'm sure is going to be a very quick video and it's all about my options for March of the Mammoths this year. March of the Mammoths is an excellent readathon that I think has been hosted now for around five years and I have participated since 2019 I believe. The goal of this readathon is essentially to read one mammoth book on your TBR, and I think the hosts stipulate that as something that is over 800 pages. I often cheat, and I kind of go uh, for things that are just around 800 pages. If it's past 750, I count it. And every year that I have done this, I have tried to vary the genre of the book that I pick up. So I have read stuff like The Count of Monte Cristo. I read Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass one year. And then I think I read a historical fiction one year. So I have tried to kind of move around in terms of genre because it's not just classic novels of over 800 pages that intimidate me. It's essentially any book that is around 800 pages. And so I have four options today. I really wasn't initially going to participate in March of the Mammoths this year, but I think if I do, it's going to be one of these four. And I know where my heart lies, honestly, but let's go on and get into my list. These are just four options. I am sure I have many books that are over 800 pages on my TBR, whether that's physically or on ebook, but for some odd reason, these were essentially the four that stood out to me. And it seems to me that they were essentially the only four on my physical TBR that looked like they were big enough to be over 800 pages. And so I feel like I'm definitely missing something somewhere. Something has fallen through the cracks. A potential for me is He Knew He Was Right by Anthony Trollope. I have read only one other book by Anthony Trollope. It was The Warden, which I would say is probably his shortest novel, but I thoroughly enjoyed that. And there was something about the writing of The Warden that felt very springtime to me. And so I think maybe this is a good time of year to pick Anthony Trollope up. I have heard mixed things about He Knew He Was Right, but it's one of the few Anthony Trollope books that I have on my TBR physically that is not part of one of his overarching series. One thing I have to say is I just hate the font of this edition. I don't know if you can see it, but it literally looks like they scanned in an older copy of the book. So I'm kind of mad about that because I really don't think this edition has great readability. I really don't even know what this one is about. I just know that Anthony Trollope has such good word of mouth here on BookTube. He is an author I never would have been exposed to were it not for BookTube, I feel sure. And so I just really wanna try him. I wanna know what everyone really loves about him. But a big part of me just doesn't really want to commit to a longer series, even though I'm sure a series of the 19th century wouldn't have the same continuity as a modern series, and so I could probably read one here and there and not really be in danger of forgetting anything important. Even though I know that's probably the case, I still just don't want to commit to a series that's six books long. And so I think my next Anthony Trollope whether that's this month, next, or whenever. I really do think it's going to be he knew he was right. So I'll be interested to see if I'm pulled to this one this month. I've been kind of in a Victorian mood. So this is definitely a big contender. A book that has been on my TBR for a couple of years at this point and is one that I feel sure I would love. So I'm not really sure why it has lingered on my TBR as long as it has other than its length. And that is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is a fantasy book that is about vampires, and it is set in a semi-French world, like a French-inspired world. Say no more. It's also set up as if the main character, our main vampire, is sort of telling his life story to someone else, which very much reminds me of Interview with the Vampire, and I think that's been a lot of the criticism that this book has received is just that it's basically doing over Interview. Well, Interview is my favorite book of all time, so I'm actually happy to see it done again. I think part of my trepidation with it, other than the fact that it is over 800 pages long, uh, is that I have had issues in the past with Jay Kristoff's writing. I have enjoyed Jay Kristoff when he has been writing with another author but I don't think I have really ever taken to anything that he has written on his own because Nevernight definitely seems like a series that was meant for me because it's kind of Roman Italian inspired, 
but I just did not get on with the writing style. And I know I should love his prose. He's apparently very over the top, purple prosy, but it was over the top even for me in Nevernight. And so that I think is part of why I have been kind of nervous to go into this. And I keep thinking every autumn that this is going to be a book that I read, but I just never get to it. So this is one that is high on my list. It is, I think, 850 pages in this edition. And so I'm going to get Carpal Tunnel reading this probably, but maybe I can pick up an ebook copy of it. Well, you can see where I've gotten. I tried it before. I got to page 66. So hopefully if I do choose to go with it this month, it will fly by. I'm really kind of pulled to a fantasy right now. So this might be the one I go with. Another option in terms of a classic for me is actually a classic nonfiction. And I think this is one that I'm also really pulled towards because thinking in terms of switching up genres year to year, like I've done in the past with March of the Mammoths, I don't believe that I have ever read a nonfiction for this. And so the nonfiction that I have is The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. This is volume one, it's by Edward Gibbon. And Penguin did something really brilliant where they released this in three volumes and you can actually read it all and you don't have to get an abridged version, which is essentially what you can find. And so this is a classic of the 18th century that is really, really influential in the realm of historical writing. And it really influences how we in the modern day talk about history because Edward Gibbon had a lot of arguments and a lot of biases as a historian. And it's really one of the first times that you see that not prominently on the page, I think it's always been there prominently, but just that he is writing the book with this particular argument in mind. He is trying to persuade you, the reader, of what he believes happened when the Roman Empire in the West fell. I have tried to read this many, many times before. The writing is gorgeous, it's stunning, and what has always held me back is just that I thought, if I'm going to read this, I want to read it all. I want to read it in its entirety. I don't want to read an abridged version. And so I think now that I have this volume one that was kindly gifted to me for Christmas last year uh, by Christy Lewis, I feel like now that I have volume one, I can go on and really get started with it. I really love classic nonfiction. I think there's something really fun about it. And I particularly love it when it was written in the 18th century, 19th century. I just think there was something really lush and beautiful about the writing. And so I am looking forward to this one. And I would say I'm not even necessarily intimidated by the length of this. I do have the audiobook of this. So I've always thought at least I could turn to the audio if I felt like the physical reading was really bogging me down. But I just don't really care for the experience of listening to an audiobook. It's just not great for me, and I think it's time I accept that I'm just not an audiobook person. But I think, too, what gets me and what makes me think this is going to be a really long, drawn-out process when I read this is that I just really want to annotate it, and I really want to take notes because I think I'm going to learn a lot from this, not only in terms of just the bare basic minimum facts about the decline and fall of the Roman Empire in the West, but also just in terms of how history was being written in the 18th century and kind of what Edward Gibbon was doing for the first time. And so I think this is just going to be a multifold experience that I'm probably really going to enjoy. But I do think this is a book, just part one, that is certainly going to take me longer than a month. So maybe it's not ideal for March of the Mammoths, but my big project this year is to read more ancient literature. And I also want to read books that are engaging with ancient literature that are more modern. And so I feel like this really fits in with my overall theme of the year. So maybe I should choose this one. Last but not least is the book I feel like I'm going to choose, but there are also caveats involved here because this is the last book in a series and I actually haven't read the second book in the series. And it's been so long since I read the first, I would have to reread the first too. And that is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the last in her trilogy that is set in Edwardian England. I am one of the many who just love the Shadowhunter series and one of my favorite series of all time, possibly just in general, my favorite YA series is The Infernal Devices, which she set in Victorian London and it immediately precedes this. The characters in that series are parents in this series. 
And at this point, it's just very hard for me to describe to you what the Shadowhunter world is. I can't even give you a plot summary for this because there have been like 15 books in this world and they are all incredibly interconnected. And so if you do want to get into this, to me, your best bet is to read them in publication order because that's what I did. But I have been putting off reading the second book in this trilogy because I knew I just wanted to wait until the last book came out. The last book came out a couple of weeks ago. I have been dying to read it. It is 800 pages exactly, I think, in this edition. And this series is kind of a loose retelling of Great Expectations. This is the one I know I'm going to choose. I know I'm just going to choose to reread the first book, move into the second, and then read this one. I feel like that's probably the best bet because I really need something kind of lighthearted and fun right now. So I feel like this is probably the one that I'm going to choose. I also am just really needing, like needing a fallen angel story. And that's basically the baseline of the Shadow Hunters is like fallen angels and demon hunting. I really need that right now because uh, my favorite, one of my favorite K-pop groups just came back with a fallen angel concept and it was gorgeous. And ever since watching their music video, I have been dying to read like a fallen angel story. And there's like none out there that are good except for these. So I feel like this is probably what I'm going to go with. Uh, I do really want to read something heavier. I do really want to read a classic because I feel like it's been a long time since I picked one up. But at the same time, I've been wrestling a bit with a slump the past few weeks. So I think it's probably for the best that I do go with something a little more lighthearted. You never know. I may fly through something like this and I may want to have a classic on the go alongside it. And I say all of this right now, but come March 1st, I may change my mind entirely, but as of right now, those are my four options. Those are the four books that are really calling to me. They also appear to me to be the only four on my physical TBR that are over 800 pages, aside from, I think, Bleak House right there, but I'm having a contentious time with Dickens lately, so I just didn't want to put him on the list. I would love to know down below if you are participating in March of the Mammoths this year, and if you are, what's on your TBR? But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.